Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. So in this chapter we will be talking about genetics. Now we'll start with the basics, we'll talk about genes. But first, a question. So why is it that people have different physical characteristics? Well, we'll talk, we'll talk about character traits. So they could be physical, psychological, or physiological, so the way your body works, so to speak. And those traits are different from one person to another. Although we're all humans, we all look different, and our um, metabolism is also different. So we might have different eye colors, uh, our ears might have different shapes, uh, some people have a fast metabolism, they digest, let's say, quickly, other people don't digest as quickly, and so on and so forth. Um, it could be also psychological traits, but which have a physiological component. So some people um, have a tendency towards depression. It's a chemical imbalance in the brain. But this is all, uh, this all comes, this all stems from our genes. So it's all about our genetic code. So where are the genes or where do they come from? Well, first we have to take a step back. So we have to talk about chromatin and chromosomes. So all the cells that we have inside of us and in living organisms have a copy of this genetic information. Now we are made of what we call eukaryotic cells. So these tend to divide when they, they reproduce um, uh, Organisms that have sexual reproduction will have eukaryotic, eukaryotic, sorry, eukaryotic cells. Okay, um, so the genetic code is found inside the nucleus of these cells. So these cells constantly divide, and when they divide, the genetic material inside of them take the form of chromatin, so it kind of modifies itself a little bit. So what is chromatin? It's a mass of DNA that's combined with proteins, and you see over here, um, that little darker area in each cell. Well, these cells are at different stages of division, but this is where you would find the chromatin, okay? So where the DNA is. So when those cells divide, the, chrom the chromatin contracts and basically forms what we call chromosomes. So we can see over here what it might look like. Now, inside the chromosomes, we find our genes. Now, we as humans have 46 chromosomes. 23 came from our mother, 23 came from our father. So that's why we say 2n chromosomes, 2 times 23 gives us 46. Okay, so n being the number of pairs. We have 23 pairs of chromosome. Half of the pair comes from mom, half of the pair comes from dad. In the case of organisms such as food, an apple, for example, well, there is a male and a female cell that get together the same way uh, for any uh, organism that gets um, created through sexual reproduction, well, there's always a male and a female cell that combine together. So in the case of an apple, for example, you have the same process. It's just that the flowers have the male and female gametes, so reproductive cells that get together to eventually make an apple. So all that to say, an apple contains 17 pairs of chromosomes. A mosquito um, is pretty simple, six pairs of chromosomes. And you're going to say, but it doesn't make sense. It's such a complex organism compared to an apple. Well, chromosomes are not all created equal. In the case of the mosquitoes, for example, the chromosomes are much longer, much bigger, so they contain more genes. So it's not because you have more chromosomes that you are more complex. It has to do with the structure of your chromosomes. And another example, a goat. A goat would have 60 chromosomes. So a goat has more chromosomes than we do, but there are probably simple, simpler, shorter, smaller, so each chromosome contains less genes. All right, so each chromosome, right, uh, some chromosomes come, came from our mom, some chromosomes came from our dad. So those chromosomes code for a similar gene. So what we like to do is we like to order them in order of size, but we're going to put together two chromosomes that code for the same gene. So let's say I have eye color over here and eye color over here. I'm going to put them together. And so they're going to form a pair, and we're going to have 23 pairs, right? So we call these that are similar homologous pairs. Okay, so homologous pairs are pairs of chromosomes that have the same size and shape. And by ordering everything like this, we form what we call the karyotype. So a karyotype is basically organizing the chromosomes in order of shape and size, so we have similar genes 
side by side and it's easier to study them. There's only one pair that is non-homologous and it's for males. Males, the reproductive chromosomes are X and Y as opposed to female X and X. So in the case of males, there's one pair that is not homologous because they don't have the same size and shape, but we know that these are related to what makes them a male. Okay. All right, so inside those chromosomes, what do we find? We find our DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, okay? And I've put in color the DNA. That's where it comes from. So each chromosome is made of that DNA molecule, which has the shape of a double helix, as you can see over here. And that double helix is composed of smaller components called nucleotides okay so here you have one nucleotide for example so inside that nucleotide what do we find we find four things a sugar called deoxyribose a phosphate group so phosphorus right is part of that molecule and a um, nitrogen nitrogenous base sorry either adenine which we uh, identify by the letter a thymine letter t guanine letter g and cytosine letter c and these two sides of the helix connect together. And the nucleotides that connect together, they connect in a specific structure. So adenine always combines or always clicks, uh, connects with a thymine, and a cytosine always connects with a guanine. Okay, so always A with T and C with G. Now, those genes, what do we need them for? Well, those genes are like a recipe book and they code, the, they, they have the recipes to make proteins. Our bodies, the functioning of our bodies is based on proteins. They need protein to perform different tasks. Okay, so those proteins, where we have about 100,000 different proteins in our bodies, those proteins are made because the DNA has the recipe to make them. Okay, so there's other parts of the body that will make them, but those uh, parts need the recipe. And that's where we find the recipe. It's inside the DNA. So what are examples of proteins that we have in our body? Well, hemoglobin would be one of them. So hemoglobin is found on red blood cells and hemoglobin is basically the part that carries the oxygen in our blood. Elastin is another example. That's another type of protein that our body makes. And what is elastin? Well, it's a protein that makes the uh, skin elastic. Elastin, elastic, right? So as we get older, we produce less elastin, and that's why our skin becomes wrinkled and, and uh, flask. I mean, you, you, you get the mental picture. All right, so proteins, if we go one step lower, or if we go even more microscopic, so proteins are made of amino acids, so chains of amino acids actually 100 to 200 on average. And how many amino acids are there in the body? 20. So think of Lego blocks. So the amino acids are like Lego blocks. You're gonna plug, you have a, a choice of 20 different ones. You're gonna plug 100 to 200 of them and you're gonna make a protein. How do we know which ones to assemble one after the other? Well, that's based on the recipe that came from the DNA. In a subsequent lesson, I will explain the whole process. But for now, you just need to know the different components that are involved in the process. Okay, so depending on the sequence of amino acids, you're going to have a specific protein that is made. And that specific protein, again, uh, how do we know how to assemble it? Well, it's based on the code that we find inside genes. Okay, so if I put all these... Um, these um, pieces of information together... This is what we get. So we have the DNA helix, which contains the genes. So the genes, what are they? It's the instructions for making the protein or making various protein. Now, so the genes tell us how to make the protein. What do these protein do? They perform different functions. Oops, sorry, my S should have been here. In the body. And what are these protein made of? They're made of amino acids. And these amino acids are assembled in a specific sequence, and that specific sequence will determine what function the protein will play in the body. Protein. All right, so if you have questions, reach out, and otherwise I'll see you for your next lesson. And until then, take care.